Hi everybody, welcome back to our homestead. Today we are expanding the ways that we can make money from our homestead. Today I'm actually planting flowers that I can cut and then sell at the farmer's market. So I thought I would bring you along. You can see what I'm doing, what I'm planting, and I also want to talk with you about the varieties and the types of plants that are good for cutting and selling either at your farmer's market or wherever. So let's get started. Today I'm actually uh, digging up two of our raised beds. Now I will have flowers all over over the homestead this year, but I'm starting with two of our raised bed gardens. We used to plant a lot of veggies in raised bed gardens, but over time we've realized that on our homestead here, our soil is really great, and so planting in the ground rather than in a raised bed is going to work best for us. So I've reserved our raised beds now for more flowers and some herbs here and there, but mainly all flowers. Just yesterday, these two raised beds that I am working on today, they were filled with weeds that were like waist high. Grace and I worked for a long time on this one here and dug most of them out, but I thought we would experiment with the second raised bed garden and we just mowed them down with the lawn mower. We're gonna till it up, pick out the weed uh, roots, and then on both of these, we're going to lay down that black woven ground cover fabric that we love so much and see if we can add that now to our raised beds so we don't have to worry so much about weeding. You know, I think one of these days we're actually gonna end up using that woven ground cover on our entire homestead so we never have to pull another weed or mow the grass ever again. I'm just kidding, obviously, but it, the, the more we use that woven ground cover, the more we really, really love it. If you're interested in learning more about that, you can check it out on growersolution.com. Uh, they are a fabulous website resource for gardeners and growers like us, uh, and they actually have a discount code for our viewers called Traditionalist. 10 and we'll put that information in a comment below but moving on let's get started it's actually a gorgeous day because it's overcast and warm so the sun isn't burning my skin and isn't bright in my eyes uh, so let's take advantage of this gorgeous day You may notice that our raised beds aren't very raised. Uh, there's a reason for that, and honestly, a practical reason. It's because we have a really hard time finding soil that we can buy to fill up raised beds out here in the Ozarks. We found one company uh, about an hour away that will sell it by the dump truck load, and they will deliver it, but it's really expensive. We did buy enough when we first moved here to have these raised beds filled just the way they are, which is maybe six to seven inches deep on each bed. Um, but that's all we could afford. Our other option is just to buy bagged soil like at Walmart, but that would add up even faster, I think, than having it delivered. We also use these logs around the outside, which we get uh, from our woods. We go back and we just, you know, harvest the logs that we need uh, from trees that are already down back in the woods. They decompose pretty quickly. About every two years, we need to completely replace them, but uh, they're free, so hey, that's a good deal. Just takes a little bit of work to go get some more. So I just wanted to give you some insight as to why our raised beds aren't, you know, two feet tall, three feet tall. This is the best we can do out here in the Ozarks. Now the tiller obviously did better in the raised bed that we had already dug all the weeds out, but this I think will still end up being faster. We just mowed the weeds and uh, tilled right over them. We do need to go back and pull out all of the roots and things, but I think that uh, this is gonna save us some time. So I wanted to 
talk with you a little bit about cut flowers. And I'll be really honest with you that uh, this year is the first year that I have decided to plant any flowers on the homestead at all. The first few years that we were here, our main focus was to plant food. So the gardens and the orchard were our main priority. And now that we have a lot of that established and we kind of have our plan that we're doing every year and have enough food for our family for the year, now it's time to branch out a little bit. I'll be real honest with you that it's hard for me to do things that don't have a purpose. So planting flowers that I can eventually sell at the farmer's market makes a lot of sense for me and somehow it's like justifying planting flowers. Now I know that there's absolutely no reason why I can't just plant flowers for beauty only or for scent, uh, but planting them that I can also share with other people and make some money that just makes it all just a little bit better. I'm really excited about planting flowers this year. So I want to talk with you about a few of those that I'm going to be planting so that I can cut and sell them at the farmer's market. The first types of flower is everybody's favorite, I think, and I already have seed planted in my far raised bed that I, I, I took care of that yesterday. I can't share everything with you guys. <laughs> and that is sunflowers. I think sunflowers are like America's most favorite cut flower. Who doesn't like a sunflower? So I have four different types of sunflowers to sell as cuttings, as cut flowers at the farmer's market. The second type of flower I'm growing for cut flowers is zinnias. And again, who doesn't like zinnias? Baker Creek has a huge variety of colors. And so I have probably half dozen or more different colors of zinnias that I'm going to be selling at the farmer's market. One of these entire gardens is going to be zinnias and I actually have plans over by our shower cottage garden to have more zinnias. So that's exciting. The third raised bed garden over here full of flowers will be Cosmos. They are just so beautiful and elegant and feathery. Their foliage is also very beautiful for cut flower bouquet arrangement. I have a variety of colors. I think I have three or four, a pink, a yellow, an orange, maybe a fourth one. I don't remember, but that's what's going to go in that garden. Two other types of flowers that I'm going to be growing for cut flowers that I'm really excited about. The first one is a marigold, and that doesn't really seem like a flower that you would use as a cut flower, but there's a variety from Baker Creek called Spun Orange that is like a super double flower that actually grows on a longer stem, which lends it to be easily used as a cut flower. So I'm excited about that one. Echinacea is a perfect flower to grow for cut flowers. And a nice thing about those is that they're perennial. If you're thinking about growing flowers to sell at the market as in a bouquet or as cut flowers, think also about perennial options. This year I'm planting four different types of echinacea flowers. The echinacea purpurea, which is standard purple cone flower. The echinacea paradoxa, which looks a lot like a uh, black eyed Susan. This mellow yellow echinacea, which I think is beautiful. Uh, what's different about these also is that they don't get as tall as the other echinaceas. And then the green twister echinacea. Isn't that beautiful? I'm super excited about that. Other flowers to consider that you may not think of as cut flowers, but can also be considered dual purpose, like medicinal herbs and things like that. One example is bee balm. And this year, bee balm is also called Monarda. And this year I'm gonna be growing this um, Bergamo or Bergamo uh, bee balm or Monarda. And that's gonna be beautiful in cut flowers. Also on the herb side is yarrow. The common yarrow is white, but there are lots of different varieties of yarrow that are multicolored and they are very hardy as a cut flower and beautiful. This time of year, keep a lookout at the big box stores for their summer bulbs and summer roots uh, to go on clearance. I was at Walmart the other week and I found that they had 50% off of some of their gladiola 
packs of their bulbs as well as some gorgeous lilies. I actually got 65 bulbs of gladiolas for five bucks and 15 roots of some gorgeous lilies also for five bucks. Both of those perfect for cut flowers. The more you have the mindset of making money from your homestead, the more possibilities pop into your mind and you start looking around your homestead to see how you can use what you already have or what you can add to your homestead to make some money. These cut flowers are almost like growing money flowers. And how can you go wrong? They're also beautiful. I would love to know what types of flowers are your favorite cut flowers from the garden. It'll give me ideas for next year, which I'm already thinking about. We bought this roll of six foot ground cover for inside the greenhouse and it looks like it's gonna work perfectly on top of these raised beds. The most important part of using this ground cover is to have good staples. We use these really heavy duty six inch staples and they work great. But we had some of the like cheaper ones that you can buy just at like Walmart or Home Depot and they pull right out of the ground with, with when you get heavy winds. And especially once your plants are growing up, that's not a good thing. So invest in good staples. And the easiest way we found to cut this stuff is to use a torch because it cuts and seals it all in one pass. So of course this piece was just a little bit too short. Luckily we had some uh, leftover from another project we were doing that we had already cut in half. So this is 18 inches wide, which would be perfect for this. So we just need to uh, cut this to length and then it'll be all set. The holes are all burned, and so now it's time for us to get planting. Well, we got this raised bed all planted with zinnias, four rows of 13 plants. That's a lot of zinnias and hopefully that is a lot of money. Now the raised bed behind us, which is where the cosmos are gonna go, we need to wait for another day because there is a storm looming and we need to hurry up and get all the seedlings, all the trays of seedlings back into the greenhouse to protect them so we don't lose all of those in a giant storm. Now they're actually predicting for almost the next week straight we're supposed to be getting rain and tomorrow and Thursday we could actually get golf ball size hail. So let's pray that that doesn't happen. So that's it you guys, the end of our video for today. If you know anybody who's looking for ways to make money on the homestead or if you think they'd be interested in learning how to put this ground cover on top of a raised bar bed garden, make sure that you share this video. If you're not subscribed yet, please consider subscribing. We would appreciate it. 
And until next time, thank you so much for stopping by the homestead. Take care and God bless. God bless.